You are welcome to today's video lesson with Bright Edo. In today's lesson, I'll be discussing about a very important aspect in chemistry and it is called empirical and molecular formula calculations. So the first question we have to ask ourselves, what is an empirical formula? And the other question is, what is a molecular formula? But before we get into this aspect properly, we have to understand some basic concepts. Now, let us assume this is a compound. Let's bring out a compound. And this compound I'm to write here is a very popular one. Okay, this is the compound. Because we're using this compound to explain what empirical formula and molecular formula mean. So this is the compound. The compound here is glucose. Okay, now the question we have to ask ourselves, what is the empirical formula of glucose? And also, what is the molecular formula of glucose? Now, but first of all, let's talk about the molecular formula. Okay, molecular formula molecular formula of this compound glucose and after we talk about the molecular formula next we'll simply talk about the empirical formula of the compound so these are what we'll be discussing right now but first of all what's the molecular formula of glucose what is the chemical formula of glucose now this must be noted the molecular formula of glucose or the chemical formula of glucose is simply C six H twelve O six. So this is the molecular formula of glucose. Okay, or you can as well say this is the chemical formula of glucose. Now this must be noted: the molecular formula of a compound is the actual way that compound exists. So the question will now be, what is the empirical formula of this compound, which is glucose? Now, this must be noted. The empirical formula of a compound is the simplest form that particular compound can exist. Now, this is what I mean. Now, before we even write the empirical formula of glucose, let us try to break down this compound to its simplest form. Now, I think there will be a number that can divide through all these numbers we are seeing. Now, let me just, because we are trying to break, make sure that this particular compound gets the smallest or the simplest form it can exist. So, let's assume that we divide through all these numbers by 6. So, for we to get our empirical formula, we, we are to divide through, we are to divide through by 6. So, doing that, what are we having? When we divide 6 by this 6, we are having 1. When we divide that number by this number, we are having what? 2. And also, when we divide 6 by 6, also, we are having 1. Now, you can see that we've broken down all these numbers to this simple numbers here so how do we now get our empirical formula our empirical formula basically will not be all the smaller numbers we've gotten because i said earlier that empirical formula is the simplest form a compound can exist now here becomes c1 h2o1 or we can as well simply say because one is negligible just c h2 Oh, so this is the empirical formula of the compound called glucose. Well, this is the molecular formula of the compound because it is the actual way that particular compound exists. Now, what am I trying to say? Let's take other examples. Now, let's say we are using a compound. Okay, this compound is still common and it is called benzene. Benzene is an organic compound now what becomes the molecular formula of benzene and also what becomes the empirical formula of benzene now the molecular formula of benzene is simply the actual way benzene exists and it is c6h6 so how do we get our empirical formula we are to divide through by a number that will give us a smaller value so i think when we divide through by six we are having one and one so what are we having as a empirical formula c1 h1 or we can as well just remove the one by saying just ch 
because one is what well, negligible now my point here is this molecular formula is the actual way a compound exists while the empirical formula of the compound is the smallest form that particular compound can exist so you can see how this concept works so with all this said let us quickly go over to the calculative aspect on this topic okay guys with the previous explanations let's quickly go over to the calculative aspect of this topic which is empirical and molecular formula determination now first of all you can see i am focusing on empirical formula determination now because if you can understand empirical formula very well determining molecular formula will not be a problem now let us start now you can see that in the course of this video lesson it will be arranged into various cases and in the course of today's lesson i'll be determining empirical formula of a compound based on two cases now you can see case number one talks about empirical formula determination when percentage is given so we'll be seeing in the question percentage now with all this said let us start solving this practice question when i solve the next you will solve now let's go the question says a compound contains 92.31 percent carbon and 7.69 percent hydrogen now you can see that in the practice question we were giving percentage that's why i wrote here percentage given when percentage is given now the question now says find the empirical formula of the compound now how do we solve this practice question it is so much very easy first of all i have to identify the elements given in the question and what are the elements these are the elements let me write here elements okay and what are the two elements i'm to write their symbol carbon and hydrogen so here become c and h well here we entail percentage given that's the percentages they gave us in the question okay percentage given now what were the percentages given okay they were two 92.31 percent for carbon and 7.69 percent for hydrogen now i think this must be noted to everybody here watching this video lesson please and please you have to add this percentage in any practice question at all and this percentage when you add them it's it's supposed to give you 100 percent when you i will talk later on now you add these two values it will give you 100 percent when it gives you 100 percent you know that the practice question is correct there's no problem with the question now let us progress you can see i just identified the percentage given in the question and these were the percentages now the next point to take is to divide by atomic mass divide by atomic mass okay what are we dividing by atomic mass these values for our percentages will divide by our atomic mass and what's the atomic mass these are the atomic masses of the two elements for carbon the atomic mass is 12 for hydrogen the atomic mass is one so let's divide through by the atomic masses okay and what is the atomic mass of carbon 12 what's the atomic mass of hydrogen one so let's do that 92 let's do for carbon now 92.31 percent divide by 12 we are having uh, uh seven point seven yes let's just approximate to be seven point seven and here automatically becomes seven point no when you are getting seven point six nine do but okay let's just say seven point six nine that's what we are having here are you getting me now now the next step to follow here is to divide through these values with the smallest we have to look at the two values and divide it by the smallest so here we entail divide by smallest so let's check within these two value which is smaller it is seven is this 7.69 or 7.7 it's quite both values are almost same let's just take the smaller one which is 7.69 so with this point when we divide through this uh, 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 uh two values by this number let's divide 7.7 .7 divide by 
uh, um, 7.69 that is one okay and when we divide this and this also that will give us one and this value we just got they are called mole ratio okay the mole ratio value and if you look at it it is what one one so the point here is this for carbon what was the value c1 and for hydrogen what was the value h1 okay so to this note bringing them together we're having c1 h1 or we can as well simply say ch because because one one is negligible now to this note you can see that this is the empirical formula of the compound this is what the empirical formula of the compound and this is how to solve practice question dealing with empirical formula determination when percentage is given these steps i just followed is what you should follow when i give you the practice question you have to solve next it is not difficult it is very easy so you can see how questions like this are being tackled without stress first of the step here you simply identify the elements given after doing that you bring out the percentage given in the question after doing that you divide by the atomic masses okay the atomic masses will be given in the question and also you div after divided by the atomic masses you now look at these two values and divide by the smallest okay the, you check the one that is smallest you bring it out and divide through after doing that you simply get your empirical formula in this case it was c1 h1 or we can as well say ch so you get ready for your own practice question okay guys now this is the practice question you will be solving and you provide the answer in the comment section below now if you find this video helpful do well to click the subscribe button to this video and also share all these tutorial chemistry videos to your friends to help one another you can see how all this concept works in my other video lesson which i'll be releasing very soon i'll be explaining on the other case i basically talked about in the introductory aspect of to this video lesson which is case number two and i'll be explaining how to do that and it's simply empirical formula determination when mass is given in this video lesson we are talking about percentages well in the other video to be released very soon we'll be talking about masses so stay tuned to this channel if you've not yet subscribed do well to hit the subscribe button share this video lesson to as much you can okay to help one another 